Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Mario and welcome to introduction to modeling in Cinema 4D. So this will be a series of tutorials covering very basics, but later on we'll go a bit more into advanced techniques as well. So if you're new to Cinema 4D or new to modeling in general, I really hope that this uh, tutorial session will kind of give the answers you, you look for. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's start with small introduction into Cinema 4D interface. Now, many of you are familiar with it, but for some of you that maybe not, I would like to just cover a few things really quickly. And I won't be covering, I won't be covering every single tool, but I will be covering every tool that it's important for this session. And I can start by saying, for example, this main scene right here, this will be a main viewport where all of our objects will be located. Right here on the right side, we have our objects manager. And here we're gonna find all of our objects right here. Well, we can see here our attributes manager. Here we can edit the values of our objects and the tools that we use. And right here down on the left, we have materials manager. Here our materials will be located. And here we have coordinate manager. Now, if we go here up, we can see we have layout and set start up. So we can also choose it to animate and there is also modeling and let's say sculpting interface. So later on, maybe you can change that as well. But for now, I'll just keep it to, to start. up. So let's take a look into adding objects to the scene itself. The way to do this is we can go into this little cube. So whatever you see this little triangle, like a black little triangle, that means that you can click on it. And while holding click, you can choose any of the objects found inside. So for this purpose, I'll just choose cube. And you will see that cube just popped up to our scene. Now, you also notice a few things. This cube has kind of orange outline and also has a few one, two, three, right here. Uh, little handles, each handle on one axis. So first thing I would like to mention is this little uh, this little outline means that this object is currently selected and it's currently active. So you can also see it, it's gonna have the same color right here. So if I add another object to the scene, then you will see that, again, if you click on one, you will see that this object is currently active. Now, as for the handles itself, if you choose and click, simply click and hold, we can edit this base, uh, base shape like so. And if also if we check into attributes manager and if we move the handles, we can see that the value is changing. So that means that we can also change the value here as well. Now, next to next to our size values, we have also segment value. So if we put this, for example, to two, this will change the number of segments on our cube. Uh, for now, we won't see that because if you go into display, our gorge shading will be probably on. So what you need to do, you need to change it into gorge shading lines if it's not already. So do just that and then you will see the lines will become visible. So before it will be something like this. And once you add more lines, actually, once you add more segments, you will see more lines on your on your uh, object. Now, let's talk about uh, object manipulation. Now, right now we have tool uh, move tool that is active, meaning that we can simply move our object by holding axis like so and here you can see a representation of those axes so green one will be y blue one would be z and red one would be x axis you can also see them right here down on the floor okay now when you talk about item manipulation so for example we have an item here i want to put it back so that's why we have our coordinate manager. So I will simply hit zero 
and it will snap back to the very beginning. Now let's take a look into our scale tool. Now also if you hover long enough uh, under the uh, on top of the icon you will see shortcuts. So later on it will be kind of important that you remember those shortcuts because it will kind of uh, fasten your workflow, I would say. Uh, but more on that later. So let's just go through through this interface thing. Okay, so while we are on the scale, what we can do is manipulate this handles, but as we noticed, it will scale up only in one direction, actually won't scale in any other. So that is for now, since we are in parametric um, object. But let's go into rotation. So this will be your rotation icon. So here you can rotate your object. So like I mentioned, if you hover, you can see that you have uh, E, T, and R. So if you want to go quickly for a move, move tool to rotation tool, you can also do it with shortcuts. Now, these, this is just a small history of the items you recently used. And these icons right there represent axis locking meaning that if I go to my move tool and if I have only my x-axis locked on and if I click somewhere in the viewport and try to move the object, it will move only in one direction. So that direction being x. And if I select to use y and again move it somewhere in the viewport, that axis will be only in, uh, in y direction. But uh, bear in mind that you can still move the object while holding the axis handles. So like so. Same thing goes for rotation. Only if you try to rotate it somewhere in the viewport, it will rotate only in certain, uh, in certain, in X axis. Okay, so let's, Turn that back on. The next icon right here says coordinate system. Use world or object coordinate system. So what does that mean? If I go here to my move, actually I can position it a bit better. If I go into my move tool and something like that, you will see that my axes are actually aligned how this object is laying in, in space around us. So if we change this to world coordinate system, now we can see that these axis handles actually change to our floor, which represents also world coordinate system. So that means that these uh, world coordinate system axis will always remain the same. So it will always look like that. So it will always Y be up, Z will be there and X will be here. So this won't change. But if you change to your object coordinate system, then these handles will always refer to your object. And that sometimes can be really handy. And later on when you will take a look what uh, other selections we have right here under modeling axis. So you can you will have a bit more options than, than this. Okay, so the next thing is this is just uh, the render view. So if you hit it, it will show you the final render. And if we click away, it will be like this. These other uh, icons really this I mentioned already. So null object that will come in handy pretty much later. And this is just selection of other items and objects. And this is our spline selection and all these others will kind of cover a bit later. Now, what we can say a bit uh, else here is about these icons right here. But first, what I like to do is explain what does these little icons mean here and what we have here into in our like sub uh, sub menu I would say. So 
this icon right here is our move tool. So if we call it, we can kind of move our viewport. We're not moving the object, we're just like moving the camera. This will be our zoom in and zoom out. And this will be our rotation. Now, again, if you hold Alt on your keyboard, you can rotate your object. If you hold one on your keyboard, you can move or pan your object around. And if you hold two, you can zoom in and zoom out into your details. So it's all kind of combined of those, those, uh, those three. So Alt is for rotation, one is for moving, and two is for zoom in and zoom out. Now, when we go here into view, we have few uh, interesting, interesting uh, options. So frame all will be actually just framing the object that we have. Uh, frame geometry, it, it will kind of, also I will show you later what, what that means, but because it's still into parametric objects. So if we click it, it won't change much. And if we go into cameras, here we'll have also stuff that is interesting for us, like left, right, front, back, top, or bottom view. Uh, these views can be also accessed via this little icon here. So if I click on it, now it will show me right, front, and top view. So if I want to edit specific view, if I want to edit directly from the top, I can also select here this object. And actually, I want to set from my corner manager everything to zero. And I want to hit apply. So this will kind of reset my object. So if I go to top view, and if I edit the handles, again, you will see everything is updated automatically. And if I want to add a top view in a full screen, I just need to click this little button right here. And I can edit it in a full screen. And what you can do is go back to your perspective right here. But do know one thing that if you go like that and toggle this little thing, it you will have then two perspective views. So make sure that you go back right here. So that's kind of keeping it all nice and nice and organized. Now, another thing we have here options. Now, options, some you will use, some you will not. Um, thing that it's maybe important to us now to mention is let's say default light so if we go into board shading I'm not sure how much we'll see now default light simply shows you how the light falls on your object so later on when you're doing modeling you will probably want to see from which angles and how does light affect your model from uh, various light angles so that can uh, be very useful lately. Now we have configure and configure all. So, so if we go here, here we have some uh, variations that are actually also mentioned here. So what we want to use and what we do not want to use. So filter we have right here. So any setting that you find here is also in filter. And what that does actually like filters stuff that you don't want to see or you want to see in your viewport. So let's say grid, I want off and here I will just filter my grid off. This this applies for a bunch of things that you can see even you can turn the axes off. So if for some reason you don't see your axes, probably that means that it's off right there. And many other things that I don't, I don't know. It's just depends on the preference. You can play with this later and see what kind of fits your style. Now, as for the view, again, you have here uh, your default view, linked camera. And what's important here, maybe you will have uh, render safe, title safe, or action safe by default on in Cinema 4D. So here you can turn it off simply to have a uh, cleaner looking viewport. Now also this tinted border, it will be active something sometimes, depending on resolution that you have set. I don't know for now. For me, it's it's uh, it's not on. Yeah, now will be on. But now you know that you can uh, you can turn it turn it off. 
what else I would like to mention as, let's see. Okay, um, let's talk about a bit about these icons right here. So this, these will be really uh, important for us and these is something that we're gonna use most of the time. So now we have our object and if I can go to display and set it to core shading, actually I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, so please correct me if, I, if, I'm, uh, if I'm not. And so currently we have cube into as our parametric object, meaning that this attribute manager is open and we can edit our object from our attribute manager. We can add segments to it. We can choose to have fillet. We can choose to have our fillet radius and this is parametric object. So we can edit it, its parameters or attributes from the attribute manager. But what we want to do for certain types of modeling. So let's say we want to do polygon modeling. We need to convert this parametric object into polygonal object. So like you say, it's here, it says make editable, converts, converts the parametric object into a polygonal object. So once you click this, you will notice that this, this little cube icon that was recently here is gone. And now we have a triangle with kind of three dots, which maybe represent vertices, I would say. So vertices or points on an object. So if I click this, we'll, we'll actually reveal what points we can manipulate in our cube. So if I select a certain point, that means that I can move it anywhere I would like in space. Same thing goes if I go and select uh, edges. So it says use edge mode and says con hold control to transfer active selection. Well, what actually you can do is while you pressing enter on your keyboard, you can switch between uh, point mode, edge mode and polygon mode. So when we're in polygon mode, we can again select any number of edges and uh, manipulate them. You can also, while holding shift, you can select multiple edges and move them like that. So let's just go back. Now we have again polygon selection, meaning that we can also select full polygons and manipulate them in this sort of way. Okay, so this icon means actually enable axis, enable axis modification. So what does that mean? So we have our object and our object has default axis right here in the middle. This will allow us that we change our pivot points to something like here, for example. So now this, this I want that it's my new pivot point for my object. And once I decided to have it, I will just snap out of it and then from now on this will be my pivot point. Later on you can snap it to another object so it kind of it, it has some uses. Uh, now here we have a view portolo off which would mean so for example we have two objects in a scene and let's say I want to work only on this object. So this will mean that viewport solo single will allow me to edit only this part of object. Once you, once you have a complicated model, you will probably want to edit certain sections. So if you kind of something close, this is in your way, it can come in handy to single the object and to work only on one object. And finally, we have uh, enable snap, but about that, I have a separate session that we're gonna talk about how we're gonna use snap to manipulate our our object in space that they work uh, close together. So um, with this, I would like to close this intro quick start tutorial. 
and Cinema 4D interface. And if I skipped something, probably I will cover it later on and other sessions that are, that are coming. So, okay, so let's close this and let's move into parametric modeling.